welcome to our signature segment, See the Stories, on the three-hour news show, of course. A Twitter thread advising against rinsing after brushing teeth are going viral right now. Now, before we talk to our dentist guest, do you agree with this statement? Well, actually, I'm uh, when um, whenever I actually you know brushing my teeth, I always use a lot of uh, toothpaste, you mm -hmm. know. And but if I cannot, you know, uh, uh, rinsing it after brushing my teeth, it's like a bit weird, right? The taste is, you know. What about you? What do you think? It's still totally weird for me. Yeah. <laughs> How should we uh, clean up after we brush our teeth? Out? I know, right? Well, for me personally, I think we should rinse it, but just briefly, you know, not like over and over again. So, so that we can make sure that there's still fluoride uh, stuck in our teeth. Mm. Right. And talking and about the tweet, so actually the tweet has drawn, of course, various responses like us here from users. According to the thread, rinsing will wash away the concentrated fluoride. It also advises against wetting the brush and says it's safe to accidentally swallow some of the paste. It has received more than 18,000 retweets and 73,000 likes. So now the question is, is it true that we don't need to rinse after brushing? Here with the answer is our fellow See Today host and dentist, Rahma Landy. Hi, uh -oh. Rahma. <laughs> Hi. Hello, there she is. <laughs> yes. You are as a dentist right now, of course, yeah? yeah. With your... Um... I'm, I'm as a dentist, not as a host, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So perhaps you've heard us talking about it briefly earlier. The thread yeah. we've been mentioning said that rinsing yeah. could wash away the fluoride from the toothpaste, from our teeth. Is it true? And could you please elaborate about this? Okay, so if it's uh, about the tweet that showed that um, rinsing is actually um, not recommended um, when you're brushing your teeth, um, so we need to know first that are we using, there's two types of toothpaste, guys. Mm. So you have to understand uh, first what type of toothpaste you are actually using. Is it the one with the uh, fluoride or without the fluoride? Mm. Now, if it's uh, without the fluoride, it is okay. Mm. There's, um, it, it, you, you can proceed with, you know, rinsing, gargling, rinsing again. It's okay. But if uh, you are actually using a tooth uh, paste that contains the fluoride, yes, the recommendation is actually not to uh, rinse when you brush. Ah. Okay, so there's no water contamination to the fluoride itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to your question, so um, if the tooth uh, paste uh, actually contains the fluoride, so yes, the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, so what actually the role of fluoride on uh, our teeth and dental health? Okay, so the role of the fluoride itself, so we need to understand that um, the tooth structure itself. So our teeth, um, so um, it dentine and so and also pulp. There's a pulp chamber where inside the pulp chamber there are the nerves, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're um, you know drinking hot or, or you know eating ice cream, sometimes you feel this unpleasant sensation. Those are the nerves that actually you know um, um, capturing the moment. Yeah. Now, um, so we need to understand first the first layer of our tooth is actually the first protection is the enamel. Hmm. Okay, so that is the first guard to any dental problem such as cavity. Ah. Now, uh, fluoride, um, guys, now fluoride is actually um, a mineral. It is a, um, an eon. So they actually form of the um, hydroxyl um, appetite. So he, we call it hydroxyl appetite um, or the crystal appetite itself. So fluoride is actually good so it's not bad it's actually good for us okay so fluoride is actually one uh, way to actually prevent um, the caries or cavity uh, by protecting or actually strengthening the 
tooth enamel, the first layer, the first barrier of our tooth itself. So the role, to your question, we need to understand the role. The role is actually to prevent cavity. So um, because it can actually resist the acid, because we have acid inside our mouth. So if there's um, acids and, um, and then it meets with bacteria, therefore they are going to, um, they're going to uh, perform what is so-called the cavity, or here in Indonesia, we call it gigi berlubang. Mm -hmm. There you go. So to your question, yes, it is important. All right, uh, Rahman, before uh, we go any further, can we please test your mm. audio first? Because we can't really hear you clearly, perhaps because of the microphone. Is it too close to your oh, mouth right okay. now? Oh, let's see. Can you hear us now? Now, yeah. hear now we better. can hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's better, good. It's better. Okay. Yeah. It's better, thank you. Okay, so, I hear you guys. <laughs> uh, Rahma, uh, it's, it, it's still yes. a weird thing to know that uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, wash, uh, rinsing our, our mouth when we just finish our yeah. brush. Uh, uh, most of it because mm. of the toothpaste is uh, contained of, um, you know, uh, fluoride. Mm. So, actually, mm. uh, you know, uh, it's happened to me. Most toothpaste tend to produce foaming. I'm using the kind of that. So, right. is it uh, safer yes. to use one with less foam? Or mm -hmm. what should we do with uh, the toothpaste with, uh, that produce foaming? Do we just swallow okay. it or what should they do? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay. So um, if you mean the, about the foam that is actually, um, um, you know, the, po uh, the foam in a toothpaste, um, there's two types. There's um, which is called the mousse toothpaste. So the, the consistency is like a foam. That is for the children. Mm. But if you, um, by all means, you met the foam that actually produced once you are brushing your teeth, which is like the white bubbles that, that actually, um, you know, appears yeah. when you're brushing the teeth. Um, is it better or not? Well, it depends, guys. Because the foam itself, it's actually a detergent, mm. Mm, right? So um, most, some people, they like to have this so-called detergent, you know, um, a lot inside their mouth. Some, they don't like it. But again, the foam or the white bubbles is called a detergent and it contains um, this um, sodium uh, laurel uh, sulfate, which is called the, um, in the toothpaste ingredients, it is called SLS, sodium mm. laurel sulfate. So actually that is a um, concentration of the fluoride itself. So it contains about um, zero point, um, 0 0.2 until 0. Point, no, no, sorry, 0 0.5 until 2% from the toothpaste. Now, to your question, Ahir, so is it safe or not? It depends on the age, mm. the amount. Is the person actually sensitive or not about, you know, some people are actually sensitive if they put something inside their mouth, so they gag easily. Mm -hmm. They have irritation or burning sensation mm. and etc. So mm. it depends. All right. Now, um, we, we've seen products saying that uh, this contains no fluoride, no SLS, uh, and this is particularly mm. for a toothpaste that is designated mm. for children. So my okay. question is, um, is it true that swallowing toothpaste mm. for children is actually not safe? And what about in adults? Can you explain to us, please? Okay. Again, the question is, um, the amount mm. and, um, and of course how often do you swallow the toothpaste itself because too much too often no good why because it can actually you know lead to um, stomach pain okay. intestinal uh, blockage mm. or um, if you feel that you're always having problems with your tummy such as diarrhea mm. check okay. again do you often do you often swallow the um, toothpaste or not? But in children, crazy, yeah? in children, small amount is, um, and it's not often, it is okay for them to swallow. Why? Because in um, children's toothpaste, the ingredients is very different to adults. Oh. So they try to make it as safe as possible. That's one. The second of all, children, they don't have the ability like adults to gargle, to swish, yeah. and to spit, 
like adults、yeah. can, right?、Mm-hmm. Because、um, sometimes when they're like two or one and a half、mm-hmm. or two and a half, it's very hard for them. But again, too much swallowing, yes, it has effects. For the children as well,、right. such as um, um, stomach aches, and、um, if you have stomach aches, w- when you're a mother or your parent, you know that your child is actually,、um, you know, swallowing the toothpaste too often, and then they say, "We have,、um, I have stomach ache, mommy or, or papa." And then what you need to do is simple: you just need to bind the、um, what do you call that, the fluoride,、mm-hmm. with calcium. If it's too hard to find you a calcium inside the house, I don't have any calcium inside the house. No worries. Get yogurt.、Oh, the child needs to eat yogurt. Salt. Yes.、Oh. Okay. Uh, so, uh, is my my next question would be: Is fluoride a mandatory ingredient in a toothpaste, or、uh, can you say that it's safer for children to just、mm-hmm. get a Just get a toothpaste without fluoride in it, so that no matter how much they swallow, it would be totally safe. And also, I would like to ask, what's the perfect amount of toothpaste to be used、uh, per session, per brushing <laughs> session,、okay. for both adults and children?、Mm. Okay. Now, for children, it is recommended to have,、um, you know, to to add. This so-called fluoride、uh, to their toothpaste. It's not just from the toothpaste. So, so you can,、um, you know, earn this fluoride、um, from toothpaste, from water, from,、um, you know, salt. There's、mm-hmm. so many ways that you can actually,、um, you know,、uh, have this kind of fluoride. So the technique is different. There are variety of techniques. So you just need to、uh, pick. But again, to your question, Crisia, is、uh, children mandatory to do so? We recommend. Mm-hmm. Why? Because actually, as I said before, fluoride、uh, actually helps to prevent cavities.、Mm. And believe it or not, children they tend to have more cavities、mm. in such、mm. you know early、oh, age、okay. rather than adults,、okay. right? So that is one way to actually prevent、uh, to have the、uh, to block the cavity itself in a young age. Now, for your、uh, second question, for the、uh, amount of toothpaste. Now the amount of toothpaste that is recommended is like you know the size of a pea itself,、mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Size of a pea.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. But、um, again, it's different from、uh, one person to another person. Because for me, I usually use like half of it,、mm. and it depends. Is your toothbrush, you know, rich in this so-called、um, detergent that makes you know white bubbles?、Mm. And if you're sensitive to it, reduce the amount.、Mm. So, to your question again, the correct size or amount is the recommendation is you know as the size of a pea, just a little bit. Oh, I see. Okay. And、uh, we're back on the tweet, Rahma. So,、uh, talking about the tweet that、mm. also、uh, yeah. claimed that、uh, we don't need to wet our toothbrush before using it. So, is that true? And what's your point on this? Oh, okay. So, in my point of view, I will say yes if you can.、Mm-hmm. And if using fluoride toothpaste again, you have to know what type of toothpaste you are actually、uh, using with the fluoride that contains SLS, sodium、uh, sulfate, or without the SLS.、Hmm. Okay. But if you aren't using it, so the ones with、uh, the, uh, the toothpaste that doesn't contain any.、Um, Fluoride wetting the toothbrush for me personally, yes, we think it is、um, a good thing. Why? Because actually, it softens the brittles from the toothbrush, and it rinses the debris that actually is on the top of the of the brittles itself on the toothbrush itself. Because sometimes, let's just、uh, be honest here, not everybody actually has a cap. For their toothbrush, yes or no? Yeah,、mm-hmm. right. There you go. So sometimes, when、um, you know, when somebody is actually trying to build something, there's a construction worker, maybe. So there's like debris, dust, and stuff like that can actually land. It so it flies through the air, right? It lands、mm-hmm. on the brittles of your toothbrush itself. So that's why it's very important for you to have a cap. 
on your toothbrush. So again, to your question, yes, for me, it is, um, uh, it is okay to wet your toothbrush if you are not using a toothpaste with fluoride. Well, okay. interesting. I'm going to use um, a cap of toothbrush okay. of dinosaurs of my son. Very good, you should. <laughs> I will use that <laughs> because it's important. I do agree with that. So our next yeah. question, uh, Rahma. You know, many toothpastes uh, contain natural ingredients such as miswak or charcoal. The last one, uh, mm. I use it and I, I feel it's more suitable for me. But me actually, too, I use that too. Okay. Yeah, it's the charcoal one, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, is it better to use toothpaste uh, with this ingredient? So please elaborate with us. Okay. What is the plus minus okay. of using it? So, mm. it's a miswak, um, charcoal. So we, we are... Um, telling or categorizing this as the uh, you know natural products or natural ingredients okay but to your question no it depends on the situation mm -hmm. so because these um natural ingredients such as um charcoal itself from the uh, british journal uh year 2019 if i'm not mistaken um it shows that there are actually minimal um charcoal um with this charcoal, it, it, it has minimal effect to prevent the cavity. Mm. So the star is not the charcoal, guys. Mm. So if your aim is actually to, um, to have or to lower down the cavity, uh, charcoal is or the natural ingredients is not the star, it is not the aim. So what does that mean? So not, uh, it means that not the ingredients. The ingredients is not the star. The natural ingredients is not the star. But the technique of brushing mm. is more important. Mm. How you brush it correctly, compare that, yeah, you just brush it, you know, um, left and right as you wish, but I'm using charcoal. <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> And, and um, is it true that what we eat also, you know, plays an important role in our teeth condition? Let's say uh, we opt for a more natural toothpaste like what Akhir is right. using, which is charcoal. Mm. Um, but also, in the same time, he watch what he eats. Uh, let's say, for example, mm. he... he he avoid sweets uh, or Meat. coffee, mm -hmm. you know, anything that can stain the <laughs> yeah. teeth or the tooth. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this? Okay, that is so true. So what you eat actually can um, affect your teeth itself. The, you know, the um, total healthiness of your, of your mouth, mm -hmm. right? So, um, Again, what you mentioned was very true. You know, something which contains um, sugars, like sugary uh, things, like chocolates, right? Or something which is a very sticky, such as here in Asia, we call it like, you know, a dodo, mm. which is very sticky. Yeah. Plus, it's very sweet. Plus, it's very yummy, though. <laughs> um, that you need to be careful. Um, again, meat what you eat meat doesn't well meat has sugar but it's not as you know high as chocolate but again yes it is very true to what you said um crazy what you eat is you have to be careful with what you eat if you know that you like to or your child uh they like to eat something which is very sweet not just eating drinking also too much acid, um, something which is acidy or um, something which is too sweet, something which um, contains um, soda, something like that. Yes, you need to be careful because all of that can actually contribute with the bacteria to make the cavity. Ah, okay, mm. Rahma. And what about the mouthwash? So since most uh, of the mouthwash contain alcohol, so it is safe for us okay. to use one? And uh, does it actually help to maintain or like improve our dental health? Okay, so um, you need to understand first that mouthwash, a mouthwash and toothpaste, something which is uh, very different, but they work together, okay? Mm. Just put that in mind, yeah. okay? So, um, first of all, you need to um, understand uh, that mouthwash is actually to prevent uh, or to blockage bed breath, or um, here in the medical, we say um, um, halitosis, to prevent plaques mm -hmm. and also gum disease. Mm. 
Now it helps actually, but it it does not it, it is not the the star to prevent the cavity. Remember, mouthwash is not the star. Mm -hmm. So don't drink the mouthwash. You know, um, <laughs> right, of course. Yes, I got lots of no because this is a true story, you know. My patients, they, you know, not all, but some of them, they tell me, you know, doc because I really want to go um, you know, I'm in a rush something like that and I don't have my mouth sprayer. So I have my, you know, mouthwash. I just, you know, put it a little bit in in the container and add a little bit of water and then just swallow it. Oh, oh dear god, please don't. <laughs> okay? <laughs> because why? Because alcohol itself, it contains, uh, sorry, um, mouthwash itself, it contains alcohol. Alcohol is, you know, the other name, is, uh, which is called methanol. It contains about 20% in the, in the mouthwash itself. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, so you sometimes just pay attention after you use this um, mouthwash that contains the methanol, contains this alcohol. Do you have this um, tingling sensation mm -hmm. afterwards, like burning sensations? Do you have sores? If yes, stop the mouthwash. It's not good for you. It does not match you. Okay. Mm. And again, age is very important to use this so-called mouthwash with alcohol, mm. right? So um, my suggestion is actually for you to use uh, mouthwash that does not contain any alcohol. Is, is it easy to find? Yes, it is easy to find. Just, you know, there's this, you know, type of mouthwash, blah, 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 zero, something like that. It doesn't have any um, um, uh, methanol or, or uh, alcohol itself. So again, uh, use the crack uh, mouthwash without alcohol. This is very important. Second of all, this is very important. Not under age of six. You know, kids that are a, under six of uh, the age of six may not use any mouthwash. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the parents are too creative <laughs> and then they say, you know, I want my, you know, my child or my children to have, you know, their breath that doesn't smell. You give a little bit, one drop or two drops of mouthwash, <laughs> please don't do that. Okay? So again, other than that, patients or people who are actually undergoing um, chemotherapy. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. because of cancer, they may not. We recommend they not use this uh, so-called mouthwash um, with alcohol. Or uh, for senior patients, you know, geriatric patients, mm -hmm. they may not. We strongly recommend don't use mouthwash. So again, if you really want to use mouthwash, use the non-based um, alcohol mouthwash or uh, the mouthwash which is for sensitive people mm. all right rama to to uh, resume our yes. conversation just please give mm. a brief uh, re-emphasize so should we uh, wash okay. our mouth after uh, brushing our teeth if it's so if it's, okay. if it's not so what should we do then just in brief okay then so um again it's um it depends on your toothbrush uh toothbrush here if i can show you i'm gonna show the brand yeah. here mm -hmm. right here it contains the ingredients yeah. here, okay? So you have to read the ingredients. If it's written um, sodium sulfate or SLS, that contains fluoride. So if you have that kind of um, toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, sorry, that contains the fluoride, yes, it is recommended for you not to wet your mouth area or your toothbrush. Just apply a little bit, if I can um, demo, yep. just a little bit, just about that, okay? As yeah. big as PM. Yeah. And then you apply, yeah, and then you apply it. After that, just spit. Just spit. Mm -hmm. oh, just spit. Right. Now, but this is very tricky. Why I say this is very tricky, again, it's not common for people, you know, for some people that are used to it, it's okay. But for p other people who are actually sensitive, and you did mention um, on the, uh, you know, earlier um, segment, you said that, um, you know, sometimes it feels weird, right? Just to have this kind of sensation or taste. Now, people tend to actually rinse it. It's okay, but you use a toothpaste that does not contain the uh, fluoride itself. 
All right. Okay, so that's what. So the second of all is, again, the star is not the fluoride. The star is not the um, natural ingredient, such as um, charcoal, maybe. But the star is brushing your teeth. Correctly. The way or the technique correctly. Right. So this this actually is is you know a, a long um, homework for um, you know us uh, dentists because sometimes here I've got a puppet here. Ah, okay. This is my son. <laughs> Dinosaurs. <laughs> Dinosaur. Okay, so actually the technique to brush the teeth because sometimes, believe it or not, 70% um, patients, if I ask, how do you brush your teeth? You go like this, left and right. Right. That's not right. Oh. What you need to do is you need to memorize the flag, the color of the flag, of Indonesian flag. Mm. Yeah. It's red and, and also white. white. Mm -hmm. So you start from the gum to the teeth, which is white. So it's red, white. Red, white, oh. red, white. So from uh, for the lower jaw, yeah. it's the same. Bendera merah putih. Red. Um, so the red, white, red, white, red, white. It's always like that. So it's not going, you know, left and right. After that, if you can do, you make a circular movement like this. But right. never left and right. It is not right. recommended. Mm. All right, okay. Rama. Please. Uh, yes. Um, bring your dinosaurs here, yeah, with your <laughs> toothpaste and toothbrush. Uh, I'm afraid that we have not much time for right now, um, and it should be a series of uh, educating um, yeah, how we yeah. should brush our teeth properly. So hopefully next time yeah. when you're here doing our three-hour new show, bring your dinosaurs, toothpaste, and toothbrush, yeah, yeah. for practicing it. We will. Exactly. Oh, Thank, you, Thank you, Rama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.